What's the difference between an embryo and a blastocyst? If you want to find out more, please watch this video. I'm Dr. Malpani. I'm an IVF specialist. And one of my goals is to educate patients about IVF so they have realistic expectations and don't get taken for a ride by doctors. Now, fortunately, because IVF has been around for so many years, patients are slightly better informed about what's involved in an IVF lab and a clinic. So at least they're familiar with words like embryos and blastocysts. But the trouble is they often don't know enough. And the worst thing is a lot of times that doctors will lie to them or try to bamboozle them by using jargon which is completely inaccurate. Partly because the doctor doesn't know any better because remember he's not an embryologist, he's a gynecologist and all this stuff is still foreign to him. And even worse sometimes they deliberately lie or mislead patients because the quality of services leaves a lot to be desired. So let's go step by step. An egg is the female gamete. So when the doctor does an egg collection, he takes out the eggs and puts them in the culture medium and gives it to the lab. The sperm is the male gamete. And what the IVF laboratory does, the embryologist, the magician behind the IVF treatment, puts these eggs and sperms together. This could be an IVF with a culture medium where the sperms fertilize the egg themselves or with ICSI where he actually gives the sperm a piggyback ride into each egg one at a time, which is quite fun to watch. Once you've done this and you've put the sperm and egg together after 24 hours, he checks. That's called day one. The day of egg collection is called day zero. So on day one, he checks these embryos inside the incubator, which are in the culture medium in petri dishes to see whether they fertilize or not. If it's fertilized, it's called an embryo. Embryos grow, they develop further. So a day one embryo is a single cell embryo, which you can make out has fertilized because it's got two pronuclei. By day two, these cells start dividing. The technical word for this is cleavage. So on day two, your embryo will have two cells or preferably four cells. By day three, your embryo will have between six and eight cells and the doctor, the embryologist in the IVF lab can actually see this under the microscope. You can't see it otherwise. And that's why he monitors the growth and makes sure the embryos are being pampered and the culture medium and he grows them well and he has to do a good job because embryos could easily die because if the ICSI is done clumsily, the ICSI pipet will kill the eggs or if there's an infection, then the embryos die. So lots of things need to be done. And for example, if the electricity runs out, then the temperature in the incubator will fall and the embryos will die, all kinds of things. You really require an experienced and expert embryologist to make sure your embryos go well. So this is day three. Now, lots of clinics will put back embryos on day three, which is fine. I mean, if an embryo is going to become a baby, it will whether you put it on day three or day five. But there are lots of disadvantages to putting it back on day three because lots of embryos may look good on day three. They're called eight cell grade A embryos. And when you say grade A, what does that mean? You count the number of cells, the eight cells. All the cells are clear, equal in size, and there aren't any fragments. Fragments are small little blebs of the cell when they break up the fragment. So a top quality day three embryo is an eight cell grade A embryo. But you don't know whether this embryo will continue to develop tomorrow or not, whether it will form a morula on day four. So you're still playing games and therefore you either play eeny, meeny, minor, more, let me put this embryo back. But because you don't know which embryo will become a baby, you kind of put more embryos in the hope ki matka lagega, lottery lagegi, one will grow, one will stick, one will implant and let's put more back. And that's the risk. Because when you're putting embryos on day three, doctors tend to put more embryos back. And if you transfer more embryos back, you increase the risk of a multiple pregnancy. And even a twin is a multiple pregnancy, which increases obstetric complication rates and definitely complication rates for the babies, which IVF doctors don't tell you and obstetricians don't tell you, but pediatricians will tell you that often twin pregnancies are nightmares for them. But anyway, let's go back to the IVF lab. So on day four, you now have what is called a morula, which is like a group of cells, like a bunch of grips, which is where the word comes from. And you wait till day five, by which time this embryo now forms what is called a blastocyst. That's what the word means. A, a blastocyst is an embryo, but it's specifically a day five or a day six embryo. And it's called a blastocyst because it's easy to identify a blastocyst. It's got a cavity inside it. Uh, this cavity is called a blastocele and if all this is confusing, please don't worry. There are lots of 
images available online just do a google image search or go to our website at www.drmalpani.com where our embryologist dr sai prasad has put videos and atlases and lots of images of what embryos look like on our embryo atlas on day one day two day three day four day five day six what's a good blastocyst what's a bad blastocyst and we can grade all these depending on what the blastocyst and the embryo looks like under the microscope so typically you want the doctor to put back just one top quality blastocyst either on day five or day six and freeze the rest but Unfortunately, a lot of embryologists aren't very good at growing embryos in the lab. Uh, they don't know how to grow blastocysts, for example, and they will lie to patients. Yeah, yeah, it was a top quality embryo. God only knows whether it really was or not because they don't provide any embryo photos. And especially on day four, it's very difficult to make out whether it's actually a morula or whether it's a completely degenerated embryo. And that's how they fool patients. They actually put degenerated dead embryos back and say, yeah, yeah, that was a great embryo. And obviously the poor woman's not going to get pregnant. And that's true with blastocysts as well. You can make out those blastocysts are dead. They're all black necrotic cells. This is especially true when you're dealing with frozen thought blastocysts. But the doctors don't say the truth because they don't want an angry patient. They don't want the patient to say, hey, why couldn't you thaw my embryos properly? And that's why they lie and that's why they hide information and that's why they don't provide photos so they can get away with this. A good clinic will routinely and proactively provide embryo photos, whether they're day three or day five. And that's in your best interests because the clinic is being open and transparent and sharing information with you. And that increases your confidence levels that you're getting good quality care. You don't need to become an embryologist. The embryologist will pick the best embryo, don't worry about that. But if you can see what he's picked, why he's picked it, your confidence levels go up and your chance of getting pregnant go up. Have any questions? Feel free to email me. Our website is www.drmalpani.com. I offer a free second opinion. Just fill in the form and I'll reply back within 24 hours. Look forward to helping you to have a baby.